Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I'm here to talk about the Book Naturalist picks for the month of March. We read not one, but two memoirs in March. We read Why Fish Don't Exist, A Story of Loss, Love, and the Hidden Order of Life by Lulu Miller. Uh, we need to really appreciate how gorgeous <laughs> these books are. And then Spineless, The Science of Jellyfish and the Art of Growing a Backbone by Julie Burwald. Another beautifully constructed book. And this is um, like, I forget the artist for this cover. Um, I think it's the science dude, the famous science dude, but you know, I didn't look ahead of time. Maybe I should have done. Anywho, anywho, well, I had to look it up. I couldn't stand it. Ernst Haeckel, famous, famous scientist and artist. Yes. So that's the cover art for this one. So super interesting to me. Uh, I enjoyed both of these books tremendously. Super interesting to me, the contrast in memoir writing. I really enjoy memoirs and yeah, there are many ways, many ways you can go about writing a memoir. So this one, Spineless, I believe I already said the titles, did I not? Yeah. <laughs> okay, getting it together here. This one I would say is nature writing, science writing even, um, biology textbook almost, uh, very, very much in the science wheelhouse, packed with information. My mind is just blown. My mind is blown by the jellyfish. I, I got my first degree in biology, it was a while ago. Um, but I feel like I know quite a bit. I mean, my dad is was a commercial fisherman and my brothers. I grew up in Florida, um, six miles from the ocean. I feel like I know quite a bit about, you know, the ocean environment. I did not know all of these things about jellyfish. Like, my mind is blown. Did I already say that? I think I did truly blown like their reproductive cycle is just like are they animals they're kind of like fungi you know they got their own little world fascinating are they even an individual creature not really not all of them like it's just i'm fascinated i'm fascinated by these creatures now uh, and so this is a bit of a memoir, maybe 20% of the book. I wouldn't even say 20%, really, um, because Julie Burwald is herself a scientist. So a lot of her memoir bits in here are in the science field. So you're still, you know, in the sciences. Um, so Really, this is more of just a biology nature writing book about jellyfish, and she uses um, her story as an anchor for the material, a timeline. So it stretches um, the information out through the course of her studies and pursuits. And it makes it more readable to me and less info dumpy. So I, I found it very approachable. I think like this is packed with information, as I said, but her writing style is very approachable for the lay reader. So I wouldn't hesitate to read it. Um, you don't need to know anything before you jump in. I will say that, you know, you have to <laughs> really love nature and biology and, you know, that arena to read this book. You know, if, if you're more into memoirs, this might not be your jam. She also uses the memoir framework 
to anchor the information in a, in a broader context, broader questioning um, in the context of global warming and climate change. And so it, it also anchors that larger concept into this smaller space of how it is affecting the jellyfish and then in turn how the jellyfish affects our world. So uh, if you do love biology, especially, you know, the marine environment, this to me is a must read, <laughs> must read. So there is that one really, really good. And then uh, the first one that I read early in the month was the why fish don't exist. So this one to me was a more true memoir because Lulu Miller is uh, sharing her life with us and processing uh, how she worked through her kind of coming of age, I would say definitely. Um, you know, she starts with her younger years and those turbulent times in your 20s when you're I don't really want to say trying to find yourself, <laughs> but y'all know what I mean by that. Um, she's just trying to find her place in the world and how she feels about herself, um, you know, and how she wants to live her life and be who she is um, and in relation to other people. And she had, you know, very turbulent times, very turbulent times. Um, toward the end, she suffers with depression and suicidal thoughts. Um, actually, this goes through the whole book, but um, she actually has a suicide attempt toward the end. Uh, but all of this is interspersed with the life of a naturalist, you know, the naturalist era back in the 1800s when, you know, they were just everywhere um, analyzing the natural world. So the naturalist here is an ichthyologist. So let me just read a bit. I, um, really got along with the writing style of both of these. This one is way more literary. Um, and I do need you guys to go watch Heidi from My Reading Life, her review of these books, because her reviews are just really excellent. And she does such a good job of researching the authors and, um, bringing, you know, their backstory to the table. And Heidi is um, a marine biologist herself. So she really has a lot to add to both of these books. Um, but Heidi did not love the writing style of this initially. Um, so that's just different tastes in um, literary styles. I like brevity in writing. I like getting to the point and I like using big words to get there. Um, I'm fascinated by language and I like word choice. Like it's not that I'm fascinated by big words. It's that I like the specificity of words, um, and the poetic nature. So I really got along with how she wrote. I think she's got a nice cadence that sounds to me like someone's actually speaking to me. So I'm going to read a section of this. And then actually there was a paragraph I meant to read in the other that just really hit me hard. So this is kind of the introduction here. And the art in this is brilliant as well. This one has gorgeous art at the intro of each chapter um, and you know Heidi explains the method behind this art so definitely watch Heidi's video so good so good okay P 
Picture the person you love the most. Picture them sitting on the couch, eating cereal, ranting about something totally charming. Like how it bothers them when people sign their emails with a single initial instead of taking those four extra keystrokes to just finish the job. Chaos will get them. Chaos will crack them from the outside with a falling branch, a speeding car, a bullet, or unravel them from the inside with the mutiny of their own cells. Chaos will rot your plants and kill your dog and rust your bike. It will decay your most precious memories, topple your favorite cities, wreck any sanctuary you can ever build. It's not if, it's when. Chaos is the only sure thing in this world. The master that rules us all. My scientist father taught me early that there is no escaping the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is only growing. It can never be diminished, no matter what we do. A smart human accepts this truth. A smart human does not try to fight it. But one spring day in 1906, a tall American man with a walrus mustache dared to challenge our master. His name was David Starr Jordan, and in many ways, it was his day job to fight chaos. I just really like the way she constructed that. So, and you can see, like, having read the book, I think she does a really good job of balancing her life and the life of David Starr Jordan, the telling of it. Um, and stringing you along, like there's a little bit of a mystery involved with the both. Not a mystery, but you don't know everything. And, and you find and change your opinions about what's going on as through the course of this tiny little book. I think it's just brilliant. Um, so there's that. So I would say if you like memoirs, this is a great read and it's a shorty um, literary fiction and then if you like more straightforward nature writing definitely this one but she makes you think a lot as well and she'll blow your mind the jellyfish will blow your mind so um, but I wanted to read this one paragraph in here and this is um, she she uh, interviews all these different scientists throughout the course of this book. And one of them is just not so much impressed with journalists. He's, he's been burned a time or two. So he's skeptical of her and not Mr. Nice with her. And it's just funny to read their interactions throughout the book. But um, she talks about these different um science groups, jellyfish researchers, and how they don't all get along. They all have different opinions. Um, it's not that they don't get along, but they have different opinions about their approach and what they think is going on in the world. And I really like what she had to say here about society in general through the lens of these jellyfish scientists. Um, and this is, you know, after one of these big, big mega meetings with all the jellyfish scientists together that didn't agree. Our conversation made clear that the question of whether jellyfish numbers are increasing or decreasing might really just be the stuff of headlines. Much as we might be attracted to a clamoring soundbite, it's got limited value. What really matters is the long-term wrangling over the question and the search for answers. In our increasingly polarized society, we can take a tip from the NCEAS scientists who continue to hash over data, to publish papers, and to collaborate despite their disagreements. Progress occurs when opposite sides engage with each other rather than talk past each other. Debate and disagreement done right force us to find new ways to answer questions, to look for mistakes, to reevaluate how we understand the world that we share. So, 
I, um, after having read this and then another book to prize book, which I'm not yet at liberty to discuss, um, but I just finished it a couple days ago. We're in serious times, serious times. And we got to quit with our little dramas and talk to each other and find some serious answers. So, um, more books. <laughs> Thanks to Britta, who also loved Spineless and read it this past month. Um, I didn't know Jer Julie Burwald had a new book coming out, so it released Tuesday, which was, was that yesterday? I think it was. <laughs> Life on the Rocks, Building a Future for Coral Reefs by Julie Burwald. So, this one is obviously Coral Reefs, and it's to a bit of um, a memoir. I think that in this one, she intersperses a bit about her daughter's um, struggle with um, maybe mental health. Um, not quite sure something to that effect, um, but fabulous. Um, this too has art in it. I swear it does. Yeah, in in the sections um, about the different types of jellyfish life cycles, really. So, not at every chapter, but, you know, Medusa. Okay, so, I just wanted to end with a little bit of an update with Book Naturalist in the coming months. So April that we are in, we are focusing an author spotlight with Jennifer Ackerman who studies birds. So I'll be reading The Genius of Birds, which was quite popular maybe four or five years ago. Uh, what did this come out? Oh, there's pictures. I remember reading this story in another book. So fun, so fun. Um, this came out in 2016. Ooh, I'm good. Oh, I'm good with the math sometimes. <laughs> so, author spotlight. You can, you know, read anything by Jennifer Ackerman that you would like. Heidi has already read this one, so she'll be reading the one about shorebirds. So be sure and remember to follow her and stay tuned. So there's that for April. And then June, we're doing the classics. So Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard heard a lot about this like I feel like I've, I've I've heard the title and name mentioned a lot but I don't really know much about it so heard all about it a lot about it is perhaps a misnomer but this is June and I will type these upcoming ones through spring and summer in the box below and then right before filming this I placed my order for May and July so some new releases coming up this summer so for May, we're doing Small Bodies of Water, um, which won the Nan Shepherd Prize for underrepresented voices in nature writing. I believe that Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures clued me in to that, or perhaps Britta, I can't remember, but I was very excited to hear about that. A, a prize for underrepresented voices in nature writing, I mean, Sign me up. Probably going to be looking some more of those in 2022. Um, and then July is Thin Places, which that book actually releases this month, uh, April 12th, if you want to get in on a free order there. Uh, Irish author, and that is through Milkweed Press. So if you are into nature writing, Milkweed Press is... Um, publisher that you want to be familiar with. They do a lot of great nature writing books. So 
that's it for now. Um, check the link below for Heidi and the list of spring summer reads for Book Naturalist. And um, how long? Oh, this is too long. Y'all got to wait for the cat video until the next, the next video because I talk too long. Sorry. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon. Bye. Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I'm here to review. <coughs> Hello, it's Doris. Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I'm here today to talk about the Book Naturalist picks for March. We had not one, but two memoirs in March. The first was Why Don't Why Fish Don't Exist, a story of love, loss. Shit, let me start over again.